Hello there, today we are going to be going over every single Lego set coming out on the 1st of July, July 2024. Now it's a very very cheap month and that has nothing to do with the prices of these individual sets because two of them are under £100, one of them is under a tenner, just about, it's £9.99 and two of them are quite a chunk over £100. If you wanted to pick up all four of these sets it's going to set you back £380 that is about £95 per set. And honestly, I don't know where most of the money is coming from. But before we get into that, I've got a little update. For the whole of this morning, I have been, I guess, boarding up my minifigures, similar to the members board, which, by the way, if you do want to be on that top row of members, there's only two spots left. So definitely consider becoming a membership soon. It's only... 99p I think for the month and you get a plaque on this members board. Thank you to the four members we already have. Lemonade, Soybean, Captain Sci-Fi and George G. Thank you for going above and beyond, supporting the channel, becoming a members and especially all the conversations we're having over in Discord because for instance all the Lego that I got from the Star Wars convention I went to yesterday and you would have seen it today but this video is also going out tomorrow. I spoke about that first over on the Discord but what I've done today is emptied my minifigure storage head full of all my minifigures basically so that I can fit all of my Ziploc bags with my Star Wars minifigures. They are only Star Wars minifigures in there and then we have my tubs full of I think one of them's full of hair and one of them's full of helmets. The only minifigures I didn't fit on the base plate were my Ninjago, but I'll probably just whack them on top and close the lid up. This is every other minifigure that isn't A, in the city, B, Star Wars related for the most part. There is a 3PO torso up there for my statue that was in the city and isn't part of Ninjago, Harry Potter... I think we've got one of them bonus Steve's which was in my city but all the Minecraft ones aren't here. These are for the most part unlicensed or duplicates from mainly licensed CMFs. But chances are you clicked on this video just to see the July releases. So first up we have the Iron Man Mark V figure. I don't really know much of the differences between Iron Man's different costumes and the different marks of his suit so i have no idea what movie this is from but the main difference with the older iron man which i do have here it's got number one i don't think it was the first brickheads because captain america also has number one but it was one of the early brickheads especially for the marvel line it's mainly red and gold this is red and silver and i do actually like the fact that they've switched the print in between this bottom torso here you've got three printed tiles slash slopes on both of these brick heads but they've switched this one by two for a one by four underneath Iron Man's eyes and it does look pretty cool. And then next up we have the Bumblebee which I think is really really cool. It seems to be a more classic Bumblebee and lines up to the one we saw in the Bumblebee movie and I think there's meant to be a new Transformers animation. I haven't really seen anything on that and I'm not sure if the trailer's out yet but I wonder if this is the Bumblebee that will be from that as well. It's just a different car to some of the bigger Michael Bay movies but that looks really cool. That's $79.99 and again all the other prices for all of these sets will be on screen in pounds, euros, United States dollars, Canadian dollars and Aussie dollary dues. And that's just to help you see the local prices as you'll probably be able to convert from one of them into your local currencies. The next vehicle is the Lamborghini Countach 5000 Quattro Volvove, which is an absolute mouthful and I've definitely butchered that last word. It's 160 pound it's definitely aimed to the people that collect the bigger Technic cars. It is brick built, I believe, over Technic, which they've started doing quite a bit recently. And it definitely looks really, really cool. 1,506 pieces. You've got the pieces to back up the price tag. Even Bumblebee, 950 pieces for £80. That's quite good for the Transformers, considering Optimus Prime come out. They reduced it since, but I can't remember if it was like £180 or something like that. And then they dropped it to £120 which usually you see companies doing the opposite over time, raising the prices, but no one was really interested in the Optimus Prime with the massive price. So it's nice to see Bumblebee a bit cheaper, obviously not as big as Optimus, so they probably had to do that to make sure they sold as many. And then 
last but not least, not the most expensive, the Lamborghini was the most expensive, but I think it's the worst for value, which is why I have left it last. So I guess last and least does work in this occasion. The Force of Creativity, which is a brand new Lego Star Wars coffee table book. I mean, Lego have advertised this to be a coffee table book, which tends to be a book you don't necessarily read. You leave it on your coffee table, perhaps someone comes around and will have a little flick for it, similar to a TV guide or a magazine that you pick up mainly for the poly bags and you'll just flick through the magazine. But this is £130. To put this into perspective, the Star Wars archives for the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy, we're yet to get them for the sequel trilogy, I don't know if they will be doing it because of how much they put out on the bonus discs, but the archives for Star Wars go over everything from behind the scenes you could possibly want. There is no stone left unturned, or at least for the most part. I'm sure there's some details that they probably forgot to include on it, but they include most of everything from the original and prequel trilogy. Each, they only cost £150, which isn't far off this, and Having looking for these, you can pick these up on Amazon or in most places for £120, which is £10 cheaper than The Force of Creativity. Now, David from Solid Brick Studios, I do have to mention as well, he went looking in his local bookstore for a book that costs this much. Most of the high brand clothing books, Gucci for instance, weren't this expensive, so I really don't know who they're targeting here. I think this could just be another joke from Lego, like with including Rex in such a cheap set to knock all these scalpers off their feet. This is just something to get a bit more money from people and perhaps it will be a collector's item. There's only going to be a few hundred people at most buying this. So it is going to be rare in the future and some people will be trying to shell out £130. I mean, the most that this could go for in the future, I see it will probably go up to £200 on the aftermarket, but there are a few different bonus behind the scenes and old sets that never got to be made. But if you do want to know about that, go check out someone's review that has been sent it, such as Solid Bricks Studios, because he shows you everything you could possibly want to see without spending £130. It's not like the 300 pages, and that is right, it is only 300 pages, this book, are exactly filled with fun facts and insider information because I can almost guarantee you'll find more words in one of the Thrawn novels, for instance, which I think have nearly double the pages. And they are smaller pages, but they probably have more words per page than something like The Force of Creativity. So I really have no idea who Lego are trying to advertise it to. I know it is definitely not me and it's probably not likely to be you behind the camera. This is for people that don't have to check their bank account before ordering a UCS set and can just pre-order it day one, probably have the full collection of every Lego Star Wars UCS set and aren't fussed about other Star Wars memorabilia. Like I have a bunch of Fungo Pops. These are die-hard Lego collectors that will probably end up reading this, but I just find it weird that they've advertised it as a coffee table book. Now, there are a few other LEGO Star Wars sets coming out in August I'd like to take a look at. The Star Destroyer, I don't think I've really spoken about the Star Destroyer. The biggest grab will probably be Cal for most people, though the minifigure selection is awesome for this, and the ship looks so, so cool. But I'll talk more on that on August the 1st. The Dark Falcon also has its own video, which I will leave tagged on the end screen alongside the TIE Fighter and X-Wing mashup, just in case you haven't already seen them but I would like to talk about this creative play droid first. And this is one of four other sets we're getting in August the 1st, and I'll talk about them in a little bit, but there will be another video. I'm not sure if it will be coming out in a few hours or I'll have already put it up early because I've got so many ideas. There'll be a few bonus videos sprinkled around. Like yesterday, for instance, when I did the double upload, I'm trying to space them out rather than uploading them at the same time. I'll leave at least six hours between each video. But the four droids look really, really cool. We've got R2-D2, we've got QTKT, we've got Chopper or C110P, I think. It looks like Chop when you've wrote it out with the dash. And then we've got an Imperial Astromech, does have a name, I'll put it on screen for you. I cannot remember. But the bonus figure is a young Leia. Firestars is quite a bit better than this one, I'll be honest. And 
The biggest thing for me isn't about the red legs or the fact that LEGO have given her gloves, which I can't find when scrolling quickly back through the Kenobi show, but perhaps that is something that never came to the screen. But it's the giant 2x2 underside round tile that they've used for her droid Lola. Also from the show, Firestar use a 1x1 round tile. It's just much more size accurate. I know LEGO like to blow droids out of proportions. I mean, this whole set is based after the minifigure rather than the actual droids, which is why their legs are so chunky. I absolutely love that. I think it looks so, so cool for these small buildable droids. And another thing, we've got three R2-D2s on shelf now. We've got the £150 one, which is for the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. And if you can't afford that, then you've got the £90 one this year, which comes with the Darth Malak figure. And if you can't afford that, well, you can't afford this one because it's also £90. It does come with four droids. I did guess that it would be just as expensive as the other one. Even though you are getting a smaller R2-D2, I would have preferred them given perhaps just the extra pieces to convert between the four, like the 8-in-1 Batman. If they could knock this down to... £40 and just give us the pieces to make each of the droids and like they do with most sets they never give us a full temple or a full scene you buy two you complete it yourself so if you wanted all the droids buy perhaps two three of them or buy the interior bricks of Rebrickable like most people are going to do with the Batman as many Batman as they want to make buy the interior bricks of Rebrickable, Brick Link, Brick Out I don't think you can actually buy bricks through Rebrickable, but there'll probably be some instructions just for the interiors up and that would have been a much easier way to market it for a bit cheaper it's a creative play droid builder but you're only building the four droids once this way you'd get to build all four droids as many times as you want because perhaps you want a chopper you'd have to take down r2 i guess chopper and the other imperial astromech are quite different colors but you'd switch around the torsos add the different legs on perhaps you could add some chopper legs on an r2d2 body it comes with a load of accessories my favorite is this image with chopper in a felony hat i think that looks so cool but i also do think lego have missed the mark on this one it needed to be cheaper than 90 pound it doesn't really matter what lego did to get it under 90 pound Perhaps they could have dropped a droid or two, but it really doesn't have much audience because would you rather have these four little droids with a few fun accessories that, to be fair, they're not exactly hard builds. Perhaps Chopper's Felony hat is the hardest out of the lot. You can get instructions from that and just buy the hat off Rebrickable. Perhaps even try and build a bigger one for your bigger astromech droids. But it would have been great to, in place of this, perhaps have got a buildable chopper at the scale of that 90 pound R2 that would have made a load of fans a lot happier and also would have still tied into the Ahsoka sets that we got chopper in the ghost last year we're rumored to get a battle of Peridia and hopefully we get images of that soon but besides that we haven't really got well we get Ahsoka in the advent so they haven't completely ignored that but I feel like we should definitely be getting a few more sets from that era. But at least we've got sets from Ahsoka, including this chopper here, who is kind of also tied into the Rebels. So they've managed to get two different errors with the one droid. Sequel fans really have nothing. Would it have been too hard to put BB-8 or maybe even BB-90 in this set? BB-8 would have fit perfectly with R2, Chopper and QTKT. And instead they went with a black and gold droid that it says r5j2 i couldn't tell you where r5j2 comes into it i'm sure they're in the background of some sort of scene but a bb8 or even a do or just some droid to link the sequels in there and open the market because r2's barely in the sequels it would have been really really nice to see but i guess lego not only favor the original trilogy but also are for now completely ignoring the sequels and we can't count the Rise of Skywalker Falcon that is still on the shelves. There's four Falcons. There's the Rise of Skywalker, the UCS, the Midi Scout, and the Rise of Skywalker Falcon is retiring for a Dark Falcon, which you would have seen an image of very briefly. And again, there is its own video up and that has no ties to the sequels besides the, well, I guess it has the Dark Ray but I'm not going to count that as she's probably going to show up in Rebuild the Galaxy. It is really, really cool to see these astromechs with all their funny accessories. Nonetheless, even if there's a few droids they could have done better. And 
Instead of QTKT, I would have wanted to see R2KT. If you're still confused on the difference, by now I've probably already uploaded a video, so I will also add that onto the end screen. I'll try not to pack it out too much, but this isn't exactly the droid we all thought it was. And if they go with this same model for the anniversary figure, it's gonna leave a few fans disappointed. Don't get me wrong, this droid is a droid from four episodes of the Clone Wars and was created because they couldn't fit R2KT in. Something with a name between R2D2 and R2KT being too familiar. But hopefully we do get R2KT as the anniversary figure and they don't make the mistake of using QTKT instead. Now on to images of the new C3PO. These were off Brickshop and I did bookmark this page but they have since taken it down and I doubt Lego will be giving out C-3PO for free. So we've got seven images taken from Brick Shop's page and it is a Singapore official Lego retailer, I think. Don't quote me on that. But you can see 3 is actually looking really, really cool. Any of you that complain about the face, I really don't know what you are seeing. So let me know if you do dislike C-3PO's face, what you dislike about it in the comments because I am quite struggling to see any issues with it and I would actually love to know what you have the problem with because a lot of people's opinions are clouded by the C-3PO. Especially with the amount of people that did complain about Chewbacca, a load of people are just complaining because, well, they didn't like Chewbacca so why would they like C-3PO? But if you genuinely dislike the face, do leave a comment and hopefully I'll be able to see what you dislike because the more I stare at it, the more I just see the C-3PO face we're used to seeing from the movies. But not only will this set be getting you C-3PO, and I'll wait for the LEGO official site to post images to confirm, you know, prices and piece counts, because I think it's only America that gets the piece counts and everything on the boxes. Actually, I think there's a piece count down there, so just ignore that. We're also getting the UCS C-3PO from the land speeder. I thought they weren't releasing their exclusive minifigures. Now, I did say there were seven images. We'll take a look at the others later, but we've now got Rex, who wasn't the exclusive minifigure on the box, so that was fair enough. But the X-Wing Luke was meant to be exclusive. They gave him out as a key ring, meaning that we had access to the arms and legs to create the figure for ourselves. So if you are looking at buying a UCS Luke, Chances are they've just bought a five pound minifigure, use the arms and legs and are upscaling the price to try and make a profit. It also means that the UCS Luke minifigure will be dirt cheap for people that maybe have a Luke to spare, are buying a five pound key ring, selling it for 12, 15 pound. It's still cheaper than you can get. The cheapest set Luke is in, which is 13 pound and the five pound key ring. If you can pick him up for less than 18 pound, and don't want to have a mech or a key ring. Now really is the time to be grabbing yourself a UCS Luke, but he was made available in a key ring that's not a set, it is a bit different. So Rex and Luke, they get away with. But now C-3PO is no longer exclusive to a land speeder, which costs probably around the two, 300 pound mark. This C-3PO isn't gonna cost as much as Chewbacca. I think 90 pound would be the best price. 120 would be a decent price. 150 is probably also likely for this buildable model. I forget what Chewbacca's going for. I believe it's somewhere around the 180 pound mark. So 150, 120, probably closer to the 150 mark because of how tall C-3PO is. And I am assuming they are all printed pieces that come in this set. But we're getting the figure for like half the price of the land speeder. And he does seem to come with not only arm printing, which is common to every set with C-3PO in now, even a poly bag we got in the magazine, but also the dual molded leg. And you can see what I mean in the next image. If we get right into C-3PO, that's definitely not printing on his leg. That's definitely a dual molded leg, a nice plaque as well for the 25 years. That is also going to be really, really cheap on Brick out, Brick Link, wherever you buy your Lego, even if you were to pick it up through another secondhand Lego store. It does look really, really nice. I think the funniest thing about this image is the plant in the bottle here. Over in the UK, I'm used to seeing these full of loose change and pennies, and they've really had to scramble, get every one of their last pennies and two pennies to be able to afford this C3PO just because of how expensive this set is gonna be. But it definitely looks like the time and the effort has been put into this and unlike Chewbacca where it felt like the head wasn't quite finished 
and they've just gone with what looked best at the time. This C-3PO really looks like they have studied the actual costume that Anthony Daniels wears and use that as inspiration for building this model. You can see that C-3PO is also on a nice sandy base plate as a reference to Tatooine. So it's another A New Hope set alongside the Tantif. I think they're getting all these A New Hope sets out because last year was the anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Next year's Empire Strikes Back and it's really the best time to do it. But I would have really loved a switchable gold leg so that this also works for the prequel trilogy, perhaps even a more wiry 3PO for Phantom Menace. Now, there are a few other images, such as this person building 3PO, 3PO's leg, and the back of 3PO. They're not great quality images, but I still can't believe we're gonna see the return of another UCS minifigure in a cheaper set. Many of you that have been LEGO fans for quite some time will probably remember they did the same thing with the Boba Fett from the UCS Slave 1 and then put him in the Master Builders Cloud City. But they were quite similarly priced and there was another uproar at that point and LEGO turned around and as far as we were aware, said to the fans that exclusive minifigures will stay exclusive. And since then, it's probably the reason we haven't got arm printing on any TIE pilots and any officers and any of that because we know they have it from sets like the UCS Star Destroyer but their minifigures will be exclusive to the bigger sets. Perhaps that's the reason they're also not giving us dual molded legs in our Imperial uniforms and some other minifigures to make the UCS figures seem that extra bit special. But it is surprising that all the years down the line, it's been like a decade since that Boba Fett we're getting the same treatment with C-3PO and I have the perfect fix for what LEGO could have done instead. So having gone through all of my LEGO minifigures, I sort of know what head pieces and hair pieces I've got spare. So I've taken a spare C-3PO and tried to recreate with my spare head and hairs an Anthony Daniels C-3PO. You can see his head is out the suit. He actually has C-3PO's helmet in his hands, which can look a bit funny because he's basically just stolen the body of C-3PO. But I think this would have made a great minifigure to come in this very expensive set. It's four collectors getting a reference to Anthony Daniels, who is the main actor behind C-3PO, both the voice and most of the movements for quite a few of the earlier movies, at least. Having to go around in that suit, it would have been really, really nice. Perhaps even just to get a printed tile with his initials in the top of the buildable helmet would be really cool. I don't know what the building experience is like, but I would have loved to have seen an Anthony Daniels buildable C-3PO. And that way they could have given him arm printing and all molded legs and it still would have been an exclusive minifigure. Perhaps not even included the head. People can customize it and it would be similar to the X-Wing Luke. So there'd be no reason for scalpers to purchase it. But I think it would have been a nice nod to the actor behind C-3PO. I did say there were four sets on top of the other two or three for August relating to Star Wars and other themes will be looked at August 1st. But we don't actually have images of them yet. I have under a very decent authority. Basically, someone left a comment saying that they should be coming out July the 1st, which is when this video goes out. So hopefully if they do come out today, I'll have a bonus video out on top of this one around midnight here in the UK with my thoughts and opinions on the other two. And I will again be going over all of them August the 1st. I think there's like 40 plus sets already scheduled for August. And if we've got more from Star Wars, there's a good chance we've got some more from some other themes. So they are Jedi Bob Starfighter, which has been confirmed on lego.com and the Battle on Peridia, or Battle of Peridia. I think it's Battle on Peridia, which goes really, really nicely with that new Star Destroyer. So hopefully we can see Thrawn, Enoch, Ahsoka, probably a new Magistrate Elsbeth, though. I wouldn't want her to take away from the figures. We're still waiting on that Ezra that was released in the 25 years of Star Wars trailer, and hopefully we can see many, many more such as some of the Night Sisters, the Night Sister Troopers, and I'd love to get a battle pack of them troopers. They are so, so cool. But if not, I will be turning to customs, so stay tuned for more mocks, customs reviews, and other news around LEGO Star Wars. I have switched up how I record these videos, so let me know how you think this is compared to how it used to be, because I have a quick side-by-side 
on screen, but hopefully you can see in the quality, it is improving a little bit. And I fixed the lighting from yesterday's video. So hopefully this video looked a bit better. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Drop a like before you head on and watch the next one and subscribe if you haven't already. May the bricks be with you always. Don't forget to check out all the videos on screen for news about all the other leaks that I've briefly mentioned in today's video.